Oh boy. Don't do this guys when you're hooking up your solar. I'm box truck Corey. This is my box truck RV conversion. Let's go inside and I'll show you my RV solar fail. Bubba box truck Corey. Hey girls. Yeah. I took a shortcut. I used some low quality terminal ends on my battery. I didn't crimp it with the proper tool. And the reason why I took these shortcuts is simple. I had low quality terminal ends. I didn't have good quality. I was in the middle of nowhere, not close to any place to get materials, didn't really have a place to get an Amazon shipment, and I just I didn't want to spend the extra money to buy the proper crimping tool, to buy the proper terminal ends, to do the job right the first time. And now, oh boy, I'm paying the price. So check this out guys 12.6 volts oh no I'm almost dead wait a minute 18.4 3 volts I'm fine what's going on with my solar system well I will show you the culprit, my suspected culprit, right here, guys. Don't do this when you're hooking up your solar. See all that corrosion, all that crap in there? That has moved the metal around enough, I believe, that I'm no longer getting my full voltage out to my 12 volt system. Now, what caused this? There's not much current going through it. What's the problem? Well, it's different types of metal, different terminal ends on these wires. I'm gonna take that apart. I'm gonna brush all the corrosion off with a good wire brush. And I'm gonna reassemble it with dielectric grease. We'll see if that solves my problem. I think it will. I'm gonna also put in a little uh, kill switch because I don't have it on the system and since I'm taking the terminals off the battery I might as well so that's the job for today do you think it'll fix my problem you know the the ultimate solution of course is to make sure all your terminal ends are the same kind of metal Okay, now let's fix this properly. I got a little package in from Amazon and I have everything I need to do the job the way I should have done it in the first place. Check this out guys. Look at this, all kinds of goodies. I've got the proper size, the right tool, what I need to get the job done rather than trying to crimp with the, the little small, smaller gauge one. So I've got some proper terminal rings. So now we can put proper terminals on here. Do it right the way I should have, right from the beginning. Look at that. No wonder there's a problem. I can't believe any power was going through that at all. It's all disintegrated. That's what's left of the clip. Look at that. 10 months this has been hooked up. It's completely destroyed this terminal and this cable. Cheap parts. That's what it is. It's worth taking the time to do it right and use quality material. Got the terminal end in there. I'm just gonna pop this over the wire. 
Give it a big squeeze. How hard can it be, right? Not bad at all. I gave a real hard tug on that and I cannot pull it off. So definitely, I think it was 12 bucks for these terminal ends. The proper heavy gauge crimper tool was 30 bucks. And that's from Amazon in Canada. It's cheaper in the States. So when you're playing with your batteries, hooking up your wires, my suggestion, buy both. Do it right the first time. Save yourself the headache. I told you, Dad. I told you, Dad. Do it right the first time. Do it right the first time. I know, Dopey. You were right. You were right. You too, Harley. You too. Check out this, guys. So once I put my cutoff switch on the post, and then I put my wire for my solar in, there's no longer room to thread the nut on. So that's a little bit of a pain in the ass, but you know, I gotta have this wire, you know, I, I want it to, I want my solar to charge my batteries, uh, even if I have the power out of the batteries disconnected with my switch. So I had to, uh, had to run over to the auto parts store and I picked up one of these a battery bolt extender. So I'm just going to thread that on. That's going to solve my problem. It was only three bucks. Look at that. Now that's a lot prettier. Got nice thick terminals that aren't going to dissolve on me. The cutoff switch for if I ever want to, you know, park the rig for an extended period or there's snow and I want to take all the load off. I also did the negative, put dielectric grease on all the ones back here too. We are in business. While I was at it, I even drilled a couple of ventilation holes and even put some up top in the top, uh, corners up there. Another job that I hadn't gotten around to that I should have. Right now, I'm just checking all the levels on my six cells. Make sure they're all topped up. I should have just did this from the beginning, guys. Cost me about 60 bucks to buy the tools and the parts to do this battery box properly. I don't, I don't want any more of this. Just disintegrated, fallen right apart, cheap, tiny little parts. Much better with good thick copper terminals put on with the proper tool little dielectric grease between the different types of metals to stop any corrosion. I'm feeling much more confident with my battery box now. That is for sure. And now, because of my laziness, inability to get the proper parts easily, what else? I don't know. I'm going to stick with laziness. I have overcharged my battery. Now, one would think a solar charge controller would not charge a battery to 18 volts and change. But it did. How? I have no idea. Positive wire was not hooked up. No, no electrical connection, just the negative cable. How, how does my battery get, get, get overcharged? I, I don't understand that aside from saying that this charge controller is about as cheap as you can go. Came with this kit and maybe I've damaged my batteries now because I chose to use it. 
$35 charge controller, controlling 300 bucks worth of batteries. I don't know, maybe I wasn't wise in that decision. And when I was working in here, I could hear the batteries bubbling. It was so loud. Oh, I can't even explain. And that is because they were being overcharged. I've never heard batteries bubble as loud as these were. Oh boy, I hope I didn't destroy them. Something smell good? What do you smell? What do you smell? Here, help me fix the solar. Help me, help me. Well, that sure is a lot better, guys. Don't you think? Tell me what you think. I do have a little bit of uh, battery acid that's boiled, either, you know, uh, overflowed or, uh, you know, maybe came out when I was bouncing around off-road and the truck was rolling, you know, uh, side to side. Oh, boy, it's a little rough through here. But I have checked the, the levels and I added a little bit of distilled water. I keep it right over here. And it didn't, it wasn't below the, the metal. So I'm hoping that, that nothing, nothing too crazy has happened to these batteries.